Howdy, I'm Chuck Fast and I'm going to do something a little different today. I'm going to replace the cam and lifters in my old Chevy van. I've got a 350 Chevy in here and the camshaft is wore out. I didn't have the right kind of oil in it. As many of us know now, we need to have that zinc in our oil for these old flat tappet camshafts. So I have another to put in it and I decided why not do a vid on working on an old Chevy van because there are people out there still that have a few of these I think but I've had this one for years and it's it gets all the used cast off parts to keep it running but it's uh, served me well through the years towed a lot of race cars and boats around and got me all over the place so I owe it to her to keep her running so I'm going to show you what it takes to tear into a, a van and uh, do this job. So we're going to start by dropping out the uh, coolant and I'm going to save it. I try to save everything. Okay, in this case I had to uh, undo my lower radiator hose as there is no pet cock on this particular radiator to drain it out. It makes it a little more difficult but I don't mind. I've been using the same old radiator for over 20 years in this van and it's hung in there and it keeps it nice and cool. So We'll let that drain, and then we're going to get inside here and get the uh, dog house off. And I'm not going to bother with videoing that part, because if you're going to do a job like this, you probably know how to get your own dog house out of your van. Okay, I've pulled off my dog house and set it back here in the rear of the van. Oh, I better turn down these tunes here. We don't want to... Uh, Google doesn't like that. I'm trying to get partnered up with them fully on their AdSense and uh, program and they don't we know a lot of good bands around here someday maybe I'll get some of those signed off so we can let you listen to them but here it is here's the van a recent upgrade to uh, headliner nice lights and these nice seats that I've covered with a towel compliments of the uh, you pull it a little over a hundred dollars took care of all this a while back and there's the motor 350 Chevy you'll notice set of headers and Edel Rock and a holly under there. <sighs> Gives me better economy and more power so you can't beat it. Next is to tear into this. I am looking at this hose, my upper radiator hose. I just recently trimmed it down but uh, you know, I saw some uh, green up there so I think I may have still uh, developed a pinhole in here. I've had this rope hose on here for years, uh, much longer than normal. But uh, I actually have this covering on here, which is old school stuff. Might look kind of cheesy, but it keeps your hose intact. It doesn't allow it to bulge out. You can get years more service. And it's part of my minimalist, minimalist lifestyle. This is what I do with the old van. I make everything last as much as I can, which not everybody agrees with. So, we'll tackle this later. I might be able to trim a little more off of it, but there's not much left before it becomes too short. But, I should probably replace this with a clutch fan, but it ain't broke. So, I've had to take the bumper off of this thing, unfortunately. The bolts. We're too rusted in holding this grill on, so bumper, get that radiator out of there. You might surmise I've been in this before. Uh, I have bolts holding this on, this is bolted on. This stuff would come out if necessary, uh, because I've put that engine in there. So the rivets that held this together have been drilled out and it's been bolted back together. Guaranteed good times for me for the next couple of days. Alright, let's try to lift it out. Without wrecking it. I haven't wrecked my radio yet. Oh, shoot. Let's see. That's how you wreck them. That's how you wreck them fumbling around.
Okay, now let's take a look at what we have. I've got everything out of the way here. I've moved the accessories aside. They're just hanging free. Alternator, power steering down there. And uh, get everything out of the way so that I can... I've got the water pump off. Get the... Uh, now I will have to make an exception. I do have to use a specialized tool to get this off. So I have my trusty old balancer puller. It's kind of bent up, but uh, it uh, has done the job many times. Let's see. So I want to take a look at this timing chain. See what shape it's in. So we'll go ahead and pull down the front first and then we'll worry about the, about the rest of the motor. Okay, let's move on up to the top of the engine. I've taken the distributor cap off, just unloosening the four bolts and unloosing the wires here, uh, and set it aside. I had to take a couple plug wires out to do it just to get it out of the way for now. I'm just taking the biggest components out first. The distributor, I just pull it straight out. I might let it sit there like this and drain a little bit, because usually a bunch of oil will come out the bottom. So we'll just leave it like that for a second. We'll get over here and we'll get the uh, the rest of our linkage unhooked and everything. I'm going to pull the intake and carburetor as a unit together. So I'll go ahead and get everything else unhooked here and go from there. Okay, I keep continuing to unhook everything that's out of the way. Uh, I just set it aside by cables, my cobbled up bracket system I came up with. Distributor cap down here. Uh, taking them, taking the bolts out. These uh, these ones here are 3 8 bolts. They use a 9 16 wrench. And the ones in the middle, the four in the middle, I use this 12 point. Like Mr. Gasket I think sells these. It uses a 3 8 inch wrench on these because there's very little clearance in the two center ones on these manifolds. So those come in real handy. Pull out the uh, choke cable, get that loose. And so, like I say, we're gonna leave the carburetor on and pull it off as a unit for now. We may disassemble later for cleanup, we'll see. Uh, so, but what's it gonna take to get it off? Oh, okay, good, it's not all glued on there tight. It's gonna come right off. I won't have to pry it off, which is real nice. Why? Because I put this thing on and I did it right. The gaskets have been oiled on one side and it's been done so that it won't tear, rip and tear everything all apart. So I can actually reuse these possibly. It just saves you some more money. Let's see if I can get it up off of there. Looks like some of them are trying to come with it. That's because there's silicone on the edges. We, we have to do that much. We don't want to have leaks. We don't have to get carried away either. Looks like. Ah. Is anything getting destroyed yet? Get it, these wires out of the way. Ah, okay. All the gaskets stayed down. Let me pull this out of the way and set it aside. Now I have pulled this steel valve cover off, and let's see if we can see about this leak here. Now, if we look along the rail, you see right here in the corner. Where the gasket was. There's wet. We can see oil there. Here's the gasket. If you look along this, this is a this here is a thick gasket on this pan. It's a racing gasket. It's like Mr. Gasket. Really expensive. But it's clean. Then we get around here to the corner, and right here we start seeing oil right there in the corner. So even though I've got this thick quarter inch thick very firm gasket on here that pan it was still leaking. These steel valve covers off these old Chevys are famous for that so this will have to be addressed when we go to put this back together. 
Okay, now I have loosened all of these rocker arm nuts. I backed them up just far enough to get these rocker arms off. You can see I've uh, just turned the rocker arms aside so that I can get at these push rods. Uh, later I may do a further inspection, but one thing I want to do, I want to take a look at these push rods. Well, that looks pretty nice. Uh, you can see that's got a round ball on the head of it. These things are leaking a little oil, so um, you want to pull all of these out and let them sit a little bit because they will leak oil out of them. But uh, you see that this is a replacement push rod. Uh, they're better than the factory ones that are just straight with a hole on the end. They can deteriorate over many, many years and start to come apart on you, start making a bunch of noise. I can I guarantee you that's why these are in there. I had to take my early ones out. I got a couple of different brands it looks like. This one here is straight but it has a press in end on it so it's also a stronger push rod. It's got a harder end pressed into it. Okay so we will simply pull all of these out and then we get a chance to take a look at these lifters and hopefully the lifters will be not flattened out on the end so that they will come through the lifter bore holes if they really get bad sometimes you can't get them up through the holes very easily and then that can turn into a bit of a chore trying to get your lifters out of there so what I'm going to do I'm just going to pull all these push rods out some people like to keep them together uh, I don't know I'm not sure about the about that but uh, when you're just using steel rockers um, I generally just pull them out and stick them back in um, alright let's get some of these out of here maybe we'll speed this part up a little bit okay there they all are let's grab them I'll just stick them in the bucket. Then, let's see, you think I can do this? Let's try. Let's see if I can get one out of there. This gas gets a little loose. I'm going to try to grab it with my finger. Uh, let's see if I can pull it out. Ooh. Ah, one lifter. Let's see what it looks like. I don't have a rag handy. Let's try this. Can you see the face of that? This lifter is wearing. If you kept going, eventually that center part could wear right through. This is a very, very old lifter. This actually is a camshaft that came out of a core motor. I scammed on it for free, and at the time all the lifters were good, and, and cam lobes were good on the cam, so who knows how many hundred thousand miles it already had on it before I ever got my hands on it and stuck it in this engine. So these lifters and camshaft have many miles, who knows, probably 250 to 300,000 miles on them if I was to take a guess. So no reason to keep these in order because these are all going straight into the recycle bin. This one looks pretty much like the other one. So what we do is we pull them all out. Sometimes we need to use a little screwdriver or something to get in there and we can hook it into the little clip to help us pull it out. Uh, other times we might have to try to grab a hold of it with uh, some vice grips or something if it's sticky and it doesn't want to come out because the end is a little messed up. Uh, this one looks pretty much the same. Drop it and so on. We'll pull all of these out of here and then we'll see if there's any bad ones. Okay, I managed to get all of the lifters out by using my fingers and a little screwdriver to help me pry them out. I got down to the front lifters here and it looks like I have the replacement lifter that I put in once before. And uh, if you look at the face of them, you can see the old one, which is in pretty good shape still, and the new one, you can see the pattern. It was wearing as it spun on top of the lobe and nowhere around the edge yet. 
So, this camshaft actually still had life in it. It could have lived longer. Uh, however, in fact, I might even keep this one lifter because it's, I know it's brand new. Almost new. Pretty new. Put it in last summer when I had a problem out in the road. So anyway, what was happening was I think these lifters just did not like that synthetic oil and these little piddle valves started not working so good and it would start making noise, clattering. First one lifter, then another at different RPMs after it got warmed up. So I knew the lifters were failing and I didn't want to have a big problem on the road somewhere. So all the lifters are out now. Next we're going to need to move to the back to the front of the engine and do a few more things. Okay, we're working on to the evening here. Rush hour has done come and gone here in the big city in Portland, Oregon. Okay, I'm just checking something out here. The timing chain. Now, this is a full steel timing chain, not like the old nylon teeth ones that GM used for so many years back in the day. So there is really not much uh, uh, chance of this uh, causing a problem as far as uh, failing, but if you see the movement on that gear, let's see. See, that's allowing that camshaft to be retarded in its timing that much. That's probably a couple degrees of camshaft retard coming from this loose chain here, so um, something we're going to want to address as well. So, it's ready to come out now. I've already removed the fuel pump. I tried to stuff something in there real quick when I pulled it out, but it didn't work, so that's my bad. Uh, there's a push rod down in here and it falls down, and you can't get the pump back in when it falls down in there without having to remove this plate off the side here. Unless you can get in there and dig it out with a little tool, which I can usually do. So I will get it out and then right behind my fuel line here, there's the bolt right there. Take that out and put a longer one through there and gently put it up against the rod when it's pushed up and it will hold the rod up in place so you can install your fuel pump and don't forget to pull the bolt back out and put the short one back in with sealer on it and then you're all set. But it'll make a hell of a noise if you forget that long bolt, believe me. Okay, so we need to get this cam out, but we do, for, for starters, is we get these three bolts off right here. <clears throat> now I'll see if I can get this gear off one-handed here. Oh yeah, okay. Gear comes off, drops down a little bit, off comes chain. Now I just drop the chain down here. Okay, gear comes back. I put the gear right back onto the cam without the chain. Stick a couple bolts through. Uh, okay. Sound like got somebody screaming out in the neighborhood out there. The kids are at play. All right, now it's going to take two hands. I'm going to grab this and I'm going to pull it right out of there. I'm going to pull the cam right out of the engine. It's going to drop out of its, its uh, bearings. And I uh, don't want to replace cam bearings. It's kind of a bitch to do. And generally these things will last forever. So I'm going to carefully pull this cam out now. Okay, here we go. Out of the engine. And uh, I'll take a quick peek at some of these lobes here. Let's just see. <laughs> yeah, so yes, it, this uses a mechanical fuel pump. I know in today's day of fuel injection that uh, that is uh, getting to be a rarity, but you know, there's a lot of old Chevys running around out there. I'm sure there's a lot of them out in foreign countries too. Matter of fact, if you're watching this from a foreign country, why don't you drop a comment down below and let us know. Check out this lobe here, very interesting. All right, see here's a fully formed lobe here. Comes to a, a rather bit of a point and that fully opens the valve, it fully raises the lifter that rides on it. Now we're looking at this road next, right next to it. This is the one where I had to replace the lifter a while back and look at this, the new one was riding on this. 
there's almost no lobe left. That would have, let's see, I don't know which valve that would be. The second one from the front. That would probably be, I'm guessing maybe the exhaust on uh, number five was barely opening. So, this, <laughs> anyway, that's not so good. I'm glad it's out of there. Alrighty then, now let's take a look at something else here. I want to look at this bearing surface. This is the bearing insert, camshaft bearing. If you note, you see the gray. Maybe we can look all the way around. This is uh, nice and gray. Uh, you don't see any big dark scratches and copper colored in there, which is good. This is a good bearing. Even if you see some copper in these bearings, they're still good to go for a long, long time, so don't let it bug you. If, it's, if you didn't scrape them all to hell, and they're mostly gray, you're good to go for a long time. I guarantee you that. I'll use a big socket to hammer this one on here. Keep hammering on it till you feel that solid ring. Okay, now I want to get this new cam in here. So I have smeared some cam lube from Comp Cams on each lobe uh, up to the first uh, bearing surface. So that means I can just grab a hold of this thing and gently go in with it. I'll try to do this one-handed. I can get it in here until this it engages into the second. And now I can go ahead and lube the rest and work it in until I get to the last portion. Then I'll put the gear on and carefully work it all the way into the back without scraping things up. Okay, I'm losing my light here and uh, the skeeters are starting to come out. So I want to get, uh, I want to check this timing chain out. So what I'm doing, I have to rotate the engine around to get the crankshaft lined up. I gotta get the i to get the uh, marker pointing straight up on this crankshaft gear. So, I didn't pull my spark plugs out, see, so I've got a little bit of resistance to work against here, but it's okay. It's working out all right. Just got to be patient. Just do it a bit at a time. We're just about there. Okay. There we have it. All right. That would be the alignment. Okay, I shoved that cam all the way in, but now I have to take it out. Uh, let's see. No, what I'll do, I want to check and see how tight this chain is, because I see the date on this, 1987. This uh, timing chain's been laying around for a long time in my stuff. So I have no idea how tight this chain might be. So, we want to check this out. Chain on it. We have to engage it with the lower gear and line the marks up. It has to be exact. Yeah, it's close. If it doesn't slide on the cam, that often happens. It takes a little bit of monkeying around to get it on there. I'm going to go ahead and snug these a couple of bolts down here just so I know that the gear is snug against the cam shaft. So I can take a look at what we have here. Now, some cars, like on the, my race car, which is sitting behind me, right in here would go a cam button. And oftentimes it just slides in there and it's held in by the lips on these heads of these nuts. And, uh, that keeps the camshaft from sliding forward, creating problems on roller cams and certain applications for racing. The button goes up against the inside of your timing cover and holds your camshaft in place so it won't walk out because it has a tendency to want to walk out. And when it does, boy, it'll change your timing like you can't believe. Uh, you can 
be fatal to an engine. You could gain 20, 25 degrees of timing when it walks out on you like that. You don't want it to do that when you're under power. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. That chain's good and firm. I'm going to use that. So that's all I wanted to know. We'll get this place cleaned up for tonight. So it looks like we're going to have video number two will probably be the uh, installation process for the camshaft here. In fact, this is probably part of video number two right here. All right. Don't forget, leave a comment, any kind of comment. I know some of this may seem a little backyard, but actually that's what it is. Just tell us what you think. Okay, come on back to part two as we continue with the installation phase of this uh, basic camshaft 101 in your driveway. And uh, feel free to leave some comments. Uh, we'll see if we can't share a few more tips and tactics. So if you have some tips and tactics of your own, it'd be nice to uh, throw them in down below there. Subscribe, whatever.